Tomorrow is St George's Day, which means that we are in for the annual tradition of people saying, but St George was Turkish. You know he never even set foot in England. Oh, and did you know that fish and chips aren't English either, and tea and curry? A strange argument, I've always thought, coming primarily from those on the left. The point, of course, is to denigrate us, to undermine any naughty feelings of patriotism we might have. But it's not the gotcha that they think it is. Because what they're really implying is that something that originates elsewhere doesn't really belong here. It can't really be English or a symbol of national identity, can it, if it's foreign? A strangely nativist implication, don't you think? We've been celebrating St George's Day in this country since the 9th century. Our kings emblazoned their banners with the cross as they marched into battle. For centuries, we prayed to St George for protection. One of the most famous lines in literature is from Shakespeare's Henry V, when the monarch cries, for Harry, England and St George. From the third century until now, it was no secret that St George was born in what is now Turkey. No one had a problem. In my experience, the people who say, but St George wasn't an Englishman, tend to be the same people who simultaneously argue that everything English is bad, but also want you to believe that there's nothing that is distinctively English at all. And certainly, there's nothing to be proud of. Well, to these people, I simply say, no, you're wrong. We've got a tremendous amount to be proud of in this little sceptered isle of ours. The philosopher Sir Roger Scruton talked about the culture of repudiation, our oikophobia from the Greek meaning a fear or hatred of place and home. Self-hatred, guilt, that instinct to vandalise and chuck away everything valuable that we've inherited from our ancestors. But I tell you this, if we as a country were an individual, always so shrouded in self-loathing, we'd be sent to see a shrink, because it's not healthy to be so unrelentingly negative and cynical about ourselves all the time. Some politicians, who will remain unnamed, seem to cringe and turn up their noses at the sight of St George's flags hanging from the windows of this great nation. They think there's something embarrassing about it, a bit dirty even. They can't tell the difference between the far right and good, natural, healthy, patriotic feelings. Call them snobs or philistines, it doesn't matter. Let them say whatever they want to say. But tomorrow is a time to celebrate, not just with those living today, but with all those who came before us, to feel proud of this great country and our many achievements over so many centuries in this shared home of ours. If some people can't appreciate the beauty of simple patriotism, that's their problem. But let's not let it stop us. St George, pray for us, because by George, we need it.